Alex Monte Conrovati. Conrovati. Tell me something. Where are you from originally? I, actually, I was born in New Orleans. Oh, really? Which a lot of people find fascinating, including uh -huh. myself. Uh -huh. But, I mean, I have to say I was here since 1974 when I was oh, four. So, so I'm from L.A. I want to tell you something. I saw the movie. I thought it was a great. It's a return to Babylon. Right. It's a silent black movie. You get great stars. Wonderful Thank you. cast. I Thank mean, you. The cast. Tell me something about the cast. You know, I'd have to say, from the moment this film started, it was really a bundle of magic, mm -hmm. because it started really just with a dream of have, wanting to do a silent film, mm -hmm. and I just stumbled. I was with my uh, my friend, right. and we stumbled upon a bag of film on Hollywood Boulevard that was what do you factory. Mean by a bag, of a film? bag, literally, there was a bag of black and white film, the factory sealed. Right. Three minutes long. Really? 16 millimeter. How did you find that? We Where? found it on, on Hollywood and Normandy. Okay, that's Hollywood Boulevard. That's right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I called my friend Devora. Uh, back then, it was 1999. Uh -huh. I didn't have a cell phone. I called her from a payphone. I said, Devora, <laughs> I found a bag of film. And we had been filming the, a movie with you. You didn't know what it was, the, I, the bag of film. The ba well, it was factory sealed. It was yet to be exposed. Oh, okay. So... I had just finished a movie with you called Citizens. Right. And suddenly there was now another opportunity for filmmaking. Uh -huh. And um, I rushed to her house because she was in Silver Lake, not too far away. Right. And we found the bag on Tuesday. And literally that Saturday we, we were filming, which w w would become uh, known as the William Desmond Taylor segment uh -huh. that's in Return to Babylon. But originally it was called The Birth of Babylon. The Birth, I see. And so The, the Birth cast. gave birth to Return. The cast. Yeah, some great people in there. You know, I have to really thank the original stars, my friends that did the Birth of Babylon, which went on to win an award. I was it really did go on to win. It won an award uh -huh. at the ARPA Foundation uh, Film Festival, right? The ARPA Foundation for Music and Art, right? And at this party, this fifty-eight thousand dollar party, uh -huh. thrown for an eight hundred dollar film. I met Maria Conchita Alonso, <laughs> and there sh we sparked the idea uh -huh. of doing another silent movie. Right. And the either there were only two roles she could play, right. either Lupa Velez or Dolores Del Rio. Well, Lupa Velez was a more salacious character, right, right. more scandalous, committing suicide. Dolores Del Rio, good for Dolores, she went on to live an extensive happy life. Right. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't fit right, so I figured I talked to Maria, uh -huh. and basically the, the characters are extensions of themselves. Uh -huh. I mean, not that Maria is suicidal, but she was this very vivacious, you know, Mexican Spitfire. Even though she's not Mexican, she's you know Venezuelan. Jennifer Tilly was very much Clara Bow, the it girl. Very good. You know, it just it Rolanda has, Watts was Josephine Baker. I could had, see you this. A, you had a premiere of the film at the at the Cicada Club Cicada, on August eleventh. Yeah, wonderful. And it was uh, it good was an out. extension. Talk about Hollywood magic. Uh, Stanley Chef, who had edited for Orson Welles became right. the final editor on Return to Babylon. So he knew the style of silent movie very uh -huh. well, knew the characters, uh -huh. uh, brought a lot of insight to trivia right, right, that right. Uh, really became the appeal of the film. Uh -huh. Many people said that it was kind of a documentary and, you know, uh, truth is stranger than fiction. Uh -huh. Really, I mean... Did we, you ever meet Gary Graver? He used to be... No. He used to be uh, Orson Welles' uh, cinematographer. No, I never met him. I thought you might have met him. So you were, yes, I, I was able to put an ensemble cast, and uh, I really was proud of the, not only the, the, the leading ladies and gentlemen, but also the extras. It was a great opportunity to really be flamboyant, be traditional to silent film mm -hmm. style. And it, little money, right, in Velvet? There, you know, Skippy, no money. No money. It was literally no money. See, your love, that's the love of the <laughs> that love. Of the artist. Everybody did it what for the you, love of the you movie. Love silent films. You know what? I went to USC film school and I, we were taught that cinema, silent film is cinema in its purest form. Right. Really, unfortunately, in today's day and age, film is still a visual medium. You right. want to tell a film in, a, right. in as many visual uh, possibilities. Uh -huh. And to give away a, a, a movie with dialogue is really cheating. Yeah. Okay, but you really, Hitchcock studied a lot of the silent masters uh -huh. and there's a lot of hitchcock films psycho vertigo where if uh -huh. you study them 10 to 15 minutes 
a film will move along with no dialogue. Mm -hmm. And so he really tried to stay true to the silent films. He did a lot of silent yes, films himself. The Alex, Lodger. you keep looking over there. i got to tell my audience why. You're I'm sorry. There. That's okay. <laughs> you brought a wonderful Giovanni... Guglielmi. Guglielmi. A nephew, great... Uh, this is a great nephew of... Of Rudy Valentino. Rudolph Valentino. Is this the Rudolph Valentino we're talking about? This one right here? The Sheik. Yes. The Sheik? That's the one. This is your great... Uh, great uh, uncle. Uncle. Yeah. God. How does it... Uh, do you remember everything when you were a child growing up about him? I really don't. He was... I was... Did your family keep it very private? Yeah, they really did. We. He was a big, big star, as we all know, silent film star, but uh, it really didn't affect our family. I mean, I'm much Where younger. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Southern California in Pasadena uh -huh. area. Uh -huh. And um, He died very young. Very young, 31. 31 years yeah, old. Yeah, I've already outlived him. You really? Outlived <laughs> you, you said that's with joy. Don't do that. Well, no, no, it's not a joy, but I mean, you know, yeah. that's a very young outlived, age. Yeah, very young. To pass away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a big star. So your whole family involved related with they all very close with yes this. very close very very close and you have memorabilia of all his stuff we do we do we what do you have do with it <laughs> what do i do with it what well are you going to do with it well as you told me earlier maybe sell it to um a uh, consignment store perhaps right sell why, these would be... why did you keep it so long I don't know. I just uh, until I'm you're at also a, you're also an interior decorator. Yeah, designer in you, Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. And I am. you live in Palm Springs, you say? I do. I see. You I go do. back and forth. I do. And I live where, in Palm where is where does uh, Newport Beach come in? I live in Newport Beach as well. Between oh, okay, I have two okay. homes: Palm Springs and Newport Beach. Newport. Well, it's got money there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he he learned from Rudy how to live lavishly. I can tell you that. He did. Yeah. Did he live? Did he really? He did. I was able to film. I was really lucky. Part of the the magic, not only finding the bag of film, but um, I was able to really secure filming at Falcon Lair, which uh, my music composer, Peter Angel, right. on Birth of Babylon, called me one day where he lives. and says, hey, I got you Falcon Lair. I'm friends with Tom at the time. It was a man named Tom, an architect that right. owned Falcon Lair. I didn't even know what Falcon Lair was. And he said, it's Rudy Valentino's house. Uh -huh. And I was really blessed, Skippy, to be filming at Rudy's house, at Norma Talmadge's house, Antonio Moreno's house. Not big house, was it? Was it wasn't a big house, no. as people thought. That's no. right, right. But it was still a lavish land. land. It was yeah. a a lot of property. There was a lot of property to move around. Huh? Ironically, we filmed uh, the Fatty Arbuckle sequence uh -huh. at the fa at the the Fatty Arbuckle sequence was shot at Falcon Lair, and the Rudy Valentino sequence was shot at the Norma Talmadge uh -huh. estate. Uh -huh. So you know you have to be uh, very much of an opportunist. What are you planning to do with this movie of this wonderful return you know, to Babylon? Because this is really a, a silent film of the twenties, real. It's really a silent good movie. It really is a silent film. My big challenge was making a feature film, uh -huh. and this was shot before The Artist, which won Best Picture and 10 right, Academy right, Oscar right. nominations. My challenge, any challenge, is to make a film that will hold a person's audience. You've got a wide screen, and you've got a fi my job is to fill the screen uh -huh. with images and keep you on the edge of your seat and entertained. I was really grateful that I know I achieved that. Mostly, the, all the... All the feedback was genuinely sincere, very positive. Many people said they wanted more. So for me, I know, I'm confident now that we could reach out to film festivals, uh -huh. possibly get awards like The Birth of Babylon did, right. and get the exposure that the artist did. There, I don't feel any, any, any reason why the film couldn't be exposed, especially with really the incredible talents of Maria Conchita Alonso. Uh -huh. Philip Block plays Ramon Navarro, did a great job. Rolanda uh -huh. Watts. People were so convinced it was a great that it was a it silent was a great film. Evening. You were there, right? Mm -hmm. yes. It was a great absolutely. evening. Yeah, it was a nice great time. evening. You had a great it really time. was a lot of fun. It was. I'm grateful to pay tribute to long forgotten stars uh -huh. such as Mabel Normand, who yeah. was really as huge as Joan Crawford. And you also had jo 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 what's her name? Joseph Jennifer Baker. Pardon? In case Josephine Baker and Josephine movie. Rolanda Watts was jo Angela Bassett had expressed interest to in Maria to play uh, Josephine Baker, but I had already met with Rolanda, and Rolanda was so passionate. Skippy, that's really what sold me on. Right. 
the the characters really wanted to be that character in the film. In the film, right. And you know what? I would ask them, well, how many silent films have you seen? And Jennifer Tilly, I mean, really studied Clara Bow's scenes. She was great in it. She really was fun. We open yeah. up with her. Uh-huh. We open up with her. Yeah, it's a great movie. I think the movie's fun, fun, fun. Rudolph Valentino, what kind of a guy? Let's talk, talk to me about. What your, kind of guy he was? Your, yeah, your, your uncle. What kind of a man he was? Was he a quiet spoken man or was he um, shy or was he. I think he was kind of. He went to the right place at the right time. No, he wasn't flamboyant, That's but he was I'm kind of shy and um, expressed interest in movies. Uh-huh. And um, I think that at the time there wasn't a lot of male leads. and he Was, was he straight? Or did you know? I don't know. I, I really you don't, don't know. You don't want to say anything. Okay. I, I don't just, know. No, people I, say, some people say he was gay. Yeah, I've heard that. Because he was so perfect and beautiful. Yeah. Now, you should know. Do you know I did extensive it? research. As far as I, I know. I never knew. I, it's, I don't think There was think never so. any never. person that he Absolutely. was male, yeah. obviously, That's associated with him. Same thing. I mean, we know for a fact that he was married twice to Jean mm-hmm. Acker and Natasha Rambova. Right. I know for a fact that he was devastated when Natasha left him. Uh-huh. So, I, I mean, he was definitely... Dev- an Italian, too. An Italian stud. Sicilian. <laughs> and know, I know from the days. research that I did, when he was called what was... Um, notoriously uh, famous for being called a powder puff, uh-huh. he was really devastated by this. Uh-huh. I just recently saw a documentary on on this, uh-huh. and Adelia St. John's or St. Rogers, right. she was a publicist at the time, she was friends with him, and she said that in a 1980 interview, he was absolutely devastated that his image would be tarnished as basically a homosexual. But he wasn't, though. I see. That's the mystery that goes with him. Yeah. The great mystery, the mystery with him. The the, another great mystery with him yeah. is whether he would have made it into talkies because he he unfortunately yeah. died mm-hmm. just before, months before, before the jazz singer. Right. We don't know uh, whether he would have survived. Would've. I think he would have. It's really what hard to of, say. You have, you have a voice on him at all? There's a recording. There's recording? A, he does an opera song. There is an Italian recording of there, a song. I of think the, of him. Of him. It's on YouTube. You can oh, see it. Really? Oh, okay. You never heard him speak? No, 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 I did not. There is no speaking? There's no speaking. There's just a singing. Just singing. Uh, wouldn't it be interesting to hear him speak? Yeah. Yeah. To, See, I played Rudy in the film, and the only reason I did it, I knew the character well, and I you know, had the similar features. Right. But Skippy, I wouldn't have done it had it been a, t- a dialogue part. Because then you'd have to take on and tackle a, yeah. an accent. It would be much more involved. The yeah. fact that I just had to stand for a couple of days and look pretty, I could do that. That, <laughs> that was easy. I mean, I'm a little older now, but at the time, it was, I could pull it off. As a director, mm-hmm. doing silent films, as a matter of fact, is it difficult doing silent movies? You know what? What was, okay, for me, because I have just a natural visionary eye, uh-huh. I see everything with a camera lens. M- my third eye is... I see everything. Sometimes in life, I'm sitting at a restaurant. I could say, well, I could edit that out because it's boring, but it's life. So I'm looking through a camera. So for me, to do a silent film was really easy. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I think Rudy must have been channeling through me and telling me where to put the camera because uh-huh. I felt it just came, I was talking to Morgan today who played Mabel Norman. Uh-huh. And there's a scene at the railroad tracks where these railroad villains take her over and try to tie her down. Right. She, today, she says, Monty, that scene was so much fun. And you know, Skippy, what made it fun, and Jennifer Tilly and Ione Skye, I was also in the film, right. playing Virginia Rappé, and someone said she looks just like her, was that I was able to put music on and you could enter that world, which you could never do in sound. Right. right. You know, if a car comes by, a helicopter, you have to, okay, rolling, cut. Yeah, your music the the is music great. really music, allowed you yeah. to get into the era. Yeah, the music. Yeah. We had fun. We yeah. really had fun. Great music. Who yeah. picked up the music? I, well, it, the music in the film, that yeah. was done by Stanley Shuff, the editor. Uh-huh. He picked uh, music, different styles. Right. Of, it's wall-to-wall wonderful. music. It's wonderful. It really is. And you're a good director, too. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's hard to do. To you know, I really, I'm, I'm really grateful. USC is one of the best film schools in the studying? world. And I, so I got my BA in production. People say that. Is it really? Like it's a really excellent school. What makes it so You know, I was, really what makes gr- it? I was really grateful because I graduated in 91 and I was 21. Okay, I was over 20 years ago. 
you know, I got the tail end of the of the of the Hollywood glamour. Yes. They would bring in Burt Lancaster. Uh -huh. They would bring in Barbara Streisand. They would bring in Paul Newman, and you got to hear them, hear them in yeah. Film Theory Four Hundred. Right. You yeah. know, you got to. And Billy Wilder came one day to talk. Ooh, and yeah. so you know, back then you you, you know they were all still alive. People, huh? and you got to hear them. Uh -huh. I mean, Stanley working with Stanley, he, I, he would tell me anecdotes of Orson Welles. Uh -huh. And it's just fascinating to hear that, you know, uh, uh -huh. his marriage to Rita Hayworth, and you know, did, it's it's good to compare notes on did Orson have problems as a filmmaker? Of course, it's just like I did. Trinidad, Trinidad, down to something about Trinidad and Rita Hayworth. Uh -huh. He made that was his worst thing ever he did. So for me, I love filmmaking, and and doing the silent film was a study in filmmaking. And a, a, a great exposure to a lost art. We open up with Theda Berra in her mm -hmm. crystal ball, because in a way, Skippy, there's something about the silent movie era that's very haunting. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, 80% of the films that were made are destroyed or lost. Theda mm -hmm. Berra, mm -hmm. who did over 40 films, only three survive. So the 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 film is told kind of in the point of view of the of the close up of the crystal ball right. that you're tapping into this haunted era. And really, I could you know I could feel and I wonder. You know, meeting Giovanni Rudy's great nephew by chance That's funny, yeah. in Palm mm -hmm. Springs out of thousands of people at a, at a street fair. Uh -huh. Just, you've got to wonder that Rudy must have been involved uh -huh. in putting the bag of film on the street, getting these silent film homes, including Falcon Lair. You have to question that he's involved. Mm -hmm. Giovanni. Yes. Growing up as a nephew, people keep constantly telling you, is that... That's Rudolph Valentino's uh, great nephew. Yes. Tell me about it. Are you writing anything about the life of him or your I, life about him? I haven't really. Your feelings. What feeling do you get about when you see him in a movie? When you see him on film, you're I sitting there a as a little boy. Star. Saying, yeah. He was just tell me. You're bigger than there. life. I think it was just an amazing thing to come from being an Italian immigrant and coming to this country and just... Your father and mother came from Italy. Italy as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and he did too, too. Yeah, you know, he did. did. Yeah, go ahead. And he just became such a megastar. Do you remember how he became such a megastar at the beginning of his career? I really you know? don't. Do you? Uh, it was... You, was it, go ahead. What's interesting is he really overcame huge obstacles because the kind of look he had was very popular for villains and in some of his yeah, early yeah, yeah, right. some villains. of the early roles right. he was a villain right. and he really had to give credit to june mathis who saw him in a movie called eyes of youth and she really stood up and wanted him for the four horsemen of the apocalypse right. and that's what really made him a big made star, a big star yeah. that's what really added more to the magic because he was against this all-american wallace reed character right. which was another tragic figure uh -huh. in the silent movie era i had the wallace reed character written for return of babylon who died at 24 of a heroin overdose a heroin addiction but you know what because i was casting people similar uh -huh. to the characters in the film, I didn't come across anyone that had the Wallace Reed characteristics. I mean, Brad Pitt Rudolph would have been Valentino, great. Rudolph Valentino, would you say he was the biggest star in the silent film? I think was when he you think the of, only biggest. I mean, well, you had Douglas Fairbanks who was big. You had Charlie Chaplin who was big. That yes, come yep. You know, yes. and the, I think when you, Rudolph I think the Rudolph, the name good. Valentino, everyone knows. Yeah. yeah. Aside from, of course, the designer. Yeah. But when you think silent movie era, yeah. I think you think Gloria Swanson, mm -hmm. Clara Bow, or Rudy Valentino yeah, and Charlie that's, Chaplin. That's I think those, those four. four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, you know, it's really a lost art. I, yeah. I mean, I'm grateful that the artist was able to open up uh -huh. some doors. Uh -huh. And 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 I I'm really I would I would correctly assume uh -huh. that the audience that went to see the artist would be interested in seeing Return of Babylon. I would think so. Tell me about your next movie. The movie I did with you. We did a film called Citizens. Tell, tell my audience about it. Please. It's a completely different film than Return of Babylon. Interesting. First Interesting. of all, it's it's uh, reuniting the Warhol, Andy Warhol survivors and superstars, Hollywood right. Lawn, Joe D'Alessandro, Udo Kier, Mary Warnoff. And that's actually, I'm looking to set up a screening, hopefully at USC. Hollywood Lawn is wonderful in the film. And you were in the film? And Joe, did, uh, my, my lady friend who said now, 
Margie McGlory. The she's impression in the is, film. She's wonderful. She did John a Betty Davis. I didn't do John. She was, she oh, she's absolutely wonderful. She's great impressionist. And that was a color film and a talkie, so it's completely different and than Return of the I did the scene with is uh, Jeannie Carmen. Jeannie Carmen. She said she knew Marilyn Monroe. Come on. No, I don't know. I, Come I, on. Let's face it. Brandon, Jean her Carmen. son, is adamant that they were friends. Now, Marilyn Monroe and her Why were doesn't she have pictures of uh, Marilyn? Well, that's also been on my mind. I mean, on your mind? I mean, it's quite obvious. She had photographs. Did you ever ask Jeannie if she ever knew Marilyn? Of course, many times on her, my show. And I looked at her in the camera and I said, Jeannie, come on, where are the photographs? She says, we never, we never thought. You know, she's talking about Robert Kennedy Jr. going to Palm, uh, to Laguna in a convertible. They were riding, mm -hmm. both of them. Oh, come on. Yeah. She but was, Jeannie did a great job in Citizens. She's she super was, funny. Yeah, she's a fun, oh, she's got boobs and uh, fun. And she was in the, she was in the scene with an agent named Sharon. Do you remember Sharon? Of course, I know Sharon very well. She's an agent. Where is she nowadays? I don't know. I was going to ask you about her. Sharon was um, Jacqueline Stallone's lady friend. Mm. That's how I know. Yeah, Sharon. Yeah, she's still around. She has a son. So I want to get. I want to get. I'm going to. I'm going to submit. Are you going to do something with? I'm going to submit both Citizens. And Return to Babylon. No, it's called Citizens. It's called Citizens. Okay. Why are you called Citizens? You know what? I, because it was really about the citizens of L.A. Oh, and okay. about the struggling of the making of the artist. And really, and Mary Warnoff plays my mom in the film. I'm the right. struggling artist. And it talks about, it delves into what makes an artist and what creates an artist. Mm -hmm. And we had some, there's some great conversations about what, what makes an artist and how how it is to be true to your art and what right, makes a good right, artist right. between from a good artist and a successful artist to a mediocre artist and i both films return to babylon and citizens pay tribute to celebrity stardom that's the kind of running theme through my films oh, is the obsession of the celebrity stardom and and the and the allure and and really the grotesqueness of it uh -huh, uh -huh. hollywood lawn tell me she's still around she's going She's doing things right now. Mm -hmm. Hollywood Lawn. Do you see her around? I, I haven't seen Holly for a long time, but I'm hoping to reunite everyone at a Citizens at a premiere. Citizen. Are you going to have a premiere? I'm working on it. So I hope you Skippy, do. you'll be one of the first to know. I want to see that movie, John. It's a fun movie. It really is. I I want to see it because of Margie and, and, uh, yeah. and Hollywood Lawn. She's so funny. And I reunite Joe DeLisandro with right. Udo Kier. They were in Andy Warhol's Frankenstein, uh -huh. Andy Warhol's Trash. Uh -huh. we, made a, we made a YouTube video of Hollywood Lawn, myself and Margie, in a video of, of, in the limousine, driving around LA, and, mm -hmm. uh, where the, all the prostitutes and all the sex changes go, and we're driving by and looking at it and carrying on. <laughs> and it's on YouTube, and it's-, it's I'll have to look for it. Oh, it's very funny. It happens to be very funny. You get a lot of hits on the, on the YouTube. Yeah, that's a funny, you should get a, you know, that YouTube, well, everybody's on it. What would be great, I'm hoping for this Palm Springs magic. I, I right. Giovanni and I were talking that there's a magic with Palm Springs, that's where we met. Right. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to submit both Return of Babylon and Citizens in the Palm Springs Film Festival. Right. So I could have like maybe a double premiere. In Palm Springs. In Palm Springs, that would be in I, January. See, Palm Springs is a great place to have a... Uh, for your movie mm -hmm. be shown. Right, John? What do you think? I agree. The older crowd, a lot of stars there. I think it'll be great. Because that movie, the silent movie, I just saw. Thank you so much. fabulous oh, movie. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a fun movie. It's, it's just, uh, I went there to see it, and uh, it was just great. I loved it. Thank you. I thought, thought you were wonderful. As a young director, you got your right into it thank you did, uh, I'm really passionate about filmmaking Skippy yeah, I, I just did, I just love it it's so much fun you know uh -huh. and it's a, such an art form that combines many art forms Salentino did he direct it all in his movies any of it I don't think so no he, he wanted to he wa oh he wanted to yeah he wanted to he didn't have uh, did he have a lot of clout or no what he wanted to move into a more sophisticated like for I know he hated the chic he thought it was trash he hated the chic he hated that Really? He thought it was total trash. He true. wanted to make movies that were really sophisticated uh -huh. and work with deeper subjects. Oh, I see. He was a Tyrone Power of the silent movies. Completely. Am I right? I thought he was a Tyrone Power. I mean, women committed the suicide when Did he they died. Really when he died? He, they committed suicide. There was something like, I mean, How many? the funeral home... In New York, I mean, yeah, the footage, York, you can see Campbell, thousands Campbell, of people Campbell, were, I mean, people Campbell. were trampled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And also uh, the lady in black. Who's this? The, the first lady. lady. There's many, many ladies in black used to come to. A they would go over here to the Hollywood, Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Cemetery. Right. I used to see them. But there are many of them. Now there's, I think, just one going around now. Oh, is there? You ever go to, you ever go to the services? No? Well, I've been there at the Hollywood Cemetery. My father's buried there as well uh -huh. at the same is he Is he near your... Uh... Yeah, he's near Rudolph Valentino's. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you had a big uh, big thing there. Yeah, that day. from my dad. Yeah, uh -huh. he passed away. And how old was your dad? Uh, he was 58 at the time. 58? Mm -hmm. Young. Yeah. Everybody's dying young. <laughs> my, my. Yeah. He's, Giovanni on the way over here was talking about how upset he is with the Hollywood Forever Cemetery because they have kind of a circus-like atmosphere well, when they show... They have films there. They have and films there. And yeah. people eating d dinner outside and... I think it's really nasty. I don't like it. No, I don't either. I don't. In the ground there and singing and carrying on. We didn't even, sign on for that. And even all. having sex, I hear, too. <laughs> I've heard yes, that, too. Yes, it's true. Yeah, I've heard that. I mean, we didn't sign on to I mean, have my dad having buried sex there. Over someone's dead body. I mean, give me a break. Oh, excuse me, honey. I, did I wake you up? I mean, come on. That's really. true, though. Of course it is. It's not very nice. No. It's not. <laughs> Valentino. Every time I see Valentino's films, I love, I love that silent movie on Fairfax. You know that I should get a screening there, Skip. That's what I was thinking. That's exactly what he should do. The screening. They have screenings there. All yeah, the time. I should contact them. That's. I'm surprised you never did. You know what? We because literally the film. Stanley Chef just edited the film. Right. Just. Did a wonderful job in less than two well, months gotta, before the well, premiere. You do another one. Do and another we, one. We're doing do another that. one in in the hopes that Jennifer Tilly, Maria Conchita Alonso, Ione Sky, they all are, they're all in all town this, this time, yeah. and we have a more exclusive kind of screen. Yes, yes, you should, you should the theater. Exactly. Yeah, that's a that, that's a cute little theater too. That'll be very very good. You're absolutely right, Giovanni. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. It's and a pleasure meeting you. Meeting you. You're a charming man, Giovanni. Thank you so much. Pronounce that last name again. I like it. Guglielmi. 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 And that was your uh, uh, Valentino's uh, last name? Last name, yes. It was, was it really? Mm -hmm. Guglielmi? Yeah. yeah there's a Rudolph name. Valentino. Guglielmi means. You know what Guglielmi means in Italian? I do. It means Williams. William? Mm -hmm. Guglielmi? It translates to Williams. Oh, does it really? Mm -hmm. Guglielmi? Very simple last name oh, in Italian. Guglielmi. Yeah. I didn't know that. Guglielmi. Yeah. Guglielmi. Okay, I thought it was like gru, gru, uh, Grudo or, uh, you know, no, those dirty words. You no, know? it's not that it's fancy, not that, unfortunately. Is, I, see, I thought so, because you're Sicilian, like yes. I am. I'm a Sicilian, too. I know that. And are you an Italian? Me, no, Arab. You're Arab. Oh, I like. Are you really Arab? Arab, yeah. Where? I speak Arabic and Spanish. Arab and Spanish. Where? In, uh, where? My in, parents are from Bethlehem, the Holy Land. Uh huh. Oh, Holy Land. Okay. We're Greek Orthodox Christians, yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, don't forget, I have a new book out, ladies and gentlemen. It's called The Hollywood Gomorra. It's coming out soon. Get it? It's all the sex lives of uh, all of the Hollywood stars, from Troy Donahue to Marlon Brando. Uh, Jimmy Dean, Monty Cliff, and uh, guess what? Elizabeth Taylor and Eddie Fisher. Those are the days I met them in Germany and um, Rome in the 60s when he was doing it.